All right, boys, it is time. You guys have given me so many different builds of the characters. There are people who wanted to do bro 1-4 on the first week, and there are all these people who wants to do bro 1-6 on the first week. We also have a party thing, party listing here too. So for example, like this, this here, after I read it a little bit, I would move over to uh, some of the guys and see how the party would also look like too. That is the content here. We might do this maybe more often, uh, taking build, uh, build reviews and stuff. Oh, okay. I see you guys are all ready to go. Now let's start. Now we have this guy, King Legend. Now we have a BT Berserker. Uh, but let's see, read the note first. Editors, my goal is to have three 1490 characters bro shots I currently have two. If I were to get a 9-7 stone in the future, would it be good to drop all Swift for Spirit Assortion for more spec or get something like one Awakening or one Sight Focus? If I give you an opinion about Swiftness uh, stat itself, Swiftness is a little bit weird. It's like it gives you a cooldown and it gives you attack speed and movement speed. If you can pull that off from somewhere else, like, he said Spirit Absorption, right? Um, you know, the, the support's the yearning, uh, there's food and all these different things. Uh, so some of the higher ceiling players in Korea are moving away from Swift. Uh, this is including me. But Swiftness in general is a good stat to have to make your character a little bit swiftier because I'm pretty sure BT Zerk is super slow uh, before you're transformed. And if you're thinking about Spirit of Ocean level 1, I mean, Spirit of Ocean level 1 is pretty shit because it only gives you like, gives you only 3%. <laughs> that's from food. If you're thinking about level 1 Spirit of Ocean, that's like a different thing. So like when you say Awakening 1 or Sight Focus, maybe Awakening is a good choice because BT Zerker's Awakenings are pretty uh, strong. Dr. Fob, Machinist. Or is it Darfob? What is this? Tripods all level 5. Yo, yeah, I mean... Oh, wait! AT Machinist! Ooh! When he said tripods level all 5, I was gonna say, yeah, well, Evolution Scouter only needs like 3 tri- I was gonna say that, but I saw AT. Wow! Nice build too, you know? AT goes for a lot of crit. Uh, you don't need that much swiftness uh, because your kit gives you so much swiftness. It says, hello, I'm going for bro. One to gate. Uh, week one, maybe gate three, four, five enough mats left over after honing up other alts. I was a Deathblade main before Scouter released. I swapped over to the Scouter when it was released. Nice! I like it, I like it. So you have negative one attack speed, that's also fine because he's always like max uh, capped on attack speed. So a Scouter is a class that you can go increase mass. So I actually don't know what your crit rate is for Adrenaline. So this is 15%. And then 7, and then you have 1400 crit. I don't know if you're over critting or not. If you have a crit synergy in your team, I think you're over critting. So, but I'm not telling you to rebuild because chat, like, to me, I'm a little bit different. If your character is fine clearing the raid, I usually don't rebuild unless a significant different thing happens. So, for example, in this case, if you happen to carve a 9 7 stone, or if you happen to get a uh, much higher eye level and get ancient like let's get a really good ancient accessory as a as a as a lucky drop then i would swap because you missing five up to even 10 percent damage is not going to hinder your run because especially five six there are dps cuts so you don't uh in this particular raid it's more closer to do mechanics than doing a lot of damage because you're just going to be doing mechanics and mechanics and mechanics. The raid itself is super uh, long and it takes a while. So s using a bunch of payons, using a bunch of gold to swap something that is different for like 2 two to 5% damage, I don't think that's necessary. But it, it's uh, different per each player. So like everyone plays differently, right? Let's take a look. You captured it with your phone? No screenshot? <laughs> Okay, we have a paladin. And then you have the, the solid four engravings that you need. Awakening, vital point, blessed, and expert. So I like how you got that vital point. Because vital point, I think it's a really good engraving for Bro Shaza raid. Like 3-4. It's not necessary. It's not mandatory. It's not necessary. But a lot of the raids reset if you have less stagger. If your party is lacking stagger, having... A vital point hit support increases a lot more of the stagger that is needed. So it does it does potentially help you clear the raid. 
And some people will go something like, oh, to just get drop of ether, it's more damage. But the thing is, sometimes to me, instead of more damage, since you're supporting anyway, just go for the utility. So I like the fact that you guys, you got, you got some vital point hit. Gunlancer, pro kill. We have a pro kill challenger here, boys. I have gems for all skills that might be of use. Shield bash, fire bullet, gunless shot, shield shock, plus all main gems for red gunlancer. Might race to level 1500 if necessary for pro kill prog. To change bills, I might replace a necklace and a book. Wow. You're ready, man. Okay, so you have Grudge, Supercharged, Lone Knight, Master Brawler, Cursed Doll, Combat Readiness. So uh, when you're fighting Pro Kill, you do use something like Shield Bash and Shield Shock, etc. But Gunlance, Red Gunlancer in general, is as long as you have Counter Gunlance, you just shit on him. That's it. You uh, Because your Bash is already a stun. And most of your skill does knockback. And you have combat readiness. Plus, you have the counter gun lance to counter one of his uh, white mo white mechanics. So, it's very it's very easy as long as you know how to fight a little bit. And most, and the first clears, the first few, few clears for hard uh, gate 2 or normal gate 2, gun lancer was one of the first to clear the gates. Because he's tanky and he's, he's designed for 101. And he does decent amount of damage. Same for blue and red, right? So I'm excited to see some of that stuff. Blue and red are both really, really, really good on Pro Kel. You can pick your nose and still beat him if you just play properly. Like you just, he's just a Giga Chad. He, he can't do it. He turns into a little baby uh, because all your shit does stuns and everything. Now, I have a little bit of comment on your engraving is combat rating this level one. Seems to be really good because, you know, my gun lancer has combat readiness level 1, right? This combat readiness level 1 engraving is m closer to a utility engraving because if I show you here, what combat readiness does is essentially it gives you 20% increase in normal damage and 30% uh, more damage, 30% uh, more shield and every time you get hit, you get 4% damage increase and it stacks up to 3. So you necessarily need to get hit in order for it to get the, the boost of damage from combat readiness, right? Honestly, the getting hit portion of it is just so hard. It only lasts 10 seconds. If it lasts like a minute, uh, it would make sense to be like a very important engraving because if you get it to 3 stacks, it's 12%. It's level 1 engraving for 12% damage. That's OP, right? That, that sounds... But the thing is... The realistically, you can't really have that stack up all the time uh, because you need to get hit while in combat stance. So uh, now if you just look at here, I don't think unless you have a 9-7 stone or in the future with bro hard coming out, most people, most gun lancers will get combat readiness level one on top of a three. So I'd rather get a solid 5-3 then going for like a 2-1 here, like a Cursed Doll 2-1. But the thing is, if you really want if you really want this kind of build, this would be Adrenaline. Adrenaline fits better. And then lower uh, the crit a little more and then put it on Swiftness. And it seems like the, the quality of the accessory could be a little... Yeah, I think the quality of the accessory can be a little better too because it seems like you added a ring here. And then and if you did, if you have a higher quality, the crit will be like 1500 or something like that. So if you put it to Earring, uh, this swiftness will be like 800 ish, and then you have like, you know, 12, uh, 1300, and you can have level two of adrenaline to cover that 10% lack of crit. That's what I think. So the two choices: just get a solid 5-3 with an e with a ring or an earring on swiftness, and go majority on crit. That's this is the DPS build, right? But if you want to be more utility, uh, give more swiftness. And then you can do level two adrenaline with level one combat readiness. I'm pretty sure this is really expensive, right? That this is a problem about gun lancers. Like they go say purple is good, purple is good, but the thing is, purple is just red gun lancer with combat readiness level one. But you don't really need to switch it. Like don't pay all the big monies and the payoffs to switch right now. I would just work on it uh, as time go. I rather have a one solid build than two different builds because having two different builds for Procal doesn't really change. Uh, uh, doesn't really change much. Because your kit is just so good. As long as you have the tripods, you're fine. I'm pretty sure you have all the tripods, see? Okay. Uh, most likely, we'll start with bro gate 1 and 2. Upgrade to bro gear for one more armor piece for the week. And do 3 to the following week. 
by 5-6, can't do previous week, and slowly upgrade my gear to bro gear, see? So this is a good choice, like as in, this is what I want people to do. Just do 1-2, and don't don't worry about FOMOing to 3-4, like maybe you can just keep honing to see if it works. You can do a tri-party for 3-4, not expecting to clear, but if everyone's goal technically should be just clearing one two because you get a free bro gear if you clear one and two but three and four is not going to get you another gear uh, it's just going to set you up a little faster so this is one to four people we're done with one to two so we have all these guys here now the problem is well this is just for fun work so you have one to these guys uh the guys that are doing uh pro kill oh there's a one person so you you posted two characters he wants to do the pro kill fight right in this case, you have a pro kill fighter here, Gun Lancer, right? A Gun Lancer should be usually along with the bar team. Maybe you can have like a Soul Fist here. This Soul Fist was a robust Soul Fist. So you have a pro kill fighter. You can have the pro, pro kill fighter number two. And the Berserker wasn't an Entropy Berserker either. I guess one of the Berserkers can go to the Gun Lancer party. And in a pro kill fight, usually group pro kill fighters, by the way. So I put this one wrong. It's supposed to be over here. They usually group one pro kill fighter into one. When the bard, uh, when the laser shoots the player that is who is going in, bard can save a three bubble and give him the three bubble buff. And when you go in, you can have the buff applied and then do a lot of damage to the 1v1 boss. You can do that. But the thing is, paladin can't do that because they need to turn on their blessed aura, but they teleport into the other side, right? So Bard is a better support for people who are going in. Therefore, if, you guys, if I guys give you sh show an example of these guys are wanting to fight inside. So you have the Gun Lancer here, Machinist here, and Sorcerer here. And then you have a Bard uh, most of the time here. Uh, so when the fight starts, let's say Gun Lancer is going in first. So the bard gives you the three bubble before he goes in. And then Gun Lancer does damage, damage, damage. If he happens to die, you know, second person goes in. Machinist, right? But by the time the second person go in, bard's job is to just rotate heals. And every one of them here, their job is to use as least amount of pots as you can. Because you want to use them while you're inside. Uh, there's so many different things where, uh, where they waste pots. When you're actually fighting uh, pro kill, right? The, the 1v1 boss, they run out of pots and they die, they just die immediately. Therefore, let's say for someone like a Gun Lancer, they kind of work as a cleanup sometimes because Gun Lancer can last the longest uh, without pots outside, right? So when I used to play with the Gun Lancer, I was like the last person to go in, like a cleanup party. So for, for person who takes the biggest advantage of bursting, which is the sorceress, you go, maybe the sorcerers will go in first. And then with the three bubble, do the burst. Sorcerers can come out if she wants to. Or if she happens to die, maybe the machinist can go in. And then after when the machinist dies, the last chance would be the gun lancer going in. Right? And then uh, doing the 1v1. Uh, but when two people go in, and while one per like when one person is dead and the other person go in, the outside mechanic can only be done by one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, only six players. So other than that, everything's going to be okay. If there's less people that are willing to go inside, you probably like need, you need to pray that these guys don't die. If there's only two people, if there's only one person who's willing to go in to, to fight the 1v1 boss, uh, they need to come out once. As in, they need to manually come out. And how you manually come out? You just you if you kill the head boss outside, he gets stunned, and a gate opens for inside, and they can come out to reset the stack. The reason why you reset the stack is because the one v one boss does more damage as the time goes. Okay, cool. Now everyone here is going to be fine. So just that, just keep those things in mind. Uh, that's how I would uh, progress the thing.